no roll cages, just all about bravery. This is away they go with a great start by Julian Majuba and a good start too by Gareth Graham from the second row of the grid. The race one winner though, Ben Collins, slow away. You're on board with Duncan Pitaway here in the Fiat, the Beast of Turin, as they head down towards Magic for the first time. Sam Hancock, this is quite a sight. Oh, look at, look at Collins going around the outside in the blitz and Ben's getting very wide there. Did he drop a wheel onto the grass between the two apexes out of Magic? Certainly gathers it all up. Flames and smoke chuffing out of the exhaust pipe on run down to full water. Fantastic stuff. So here they come, Ben, for the first time with Ben Collings trying to make progress after his sluggish start. Now, he was the winner of part one, having led and fallen back and then chipping his way back to the front. But we had uh, lots of different leaders, four in total of the first five lap race, one of whom was Julian Majuba, and he leads now. Huey Walker is second from pole position. His father, Mark, from the second row runs third, and Majuba goes wide there finds the grass on the outside of the road and so Huey Walker now picks up the race lead in the World War One aero engine Theophile and he's trying to escape with Julian Majub second and then the 200 horsepower Dara and the 25.4 litre car of Mark Walker in third place. Well, Hugh Walker did well there, didn't he? I was thinking he was looking very racy through the first part of St. Mary's into the right hand. A lot of little bits of steering in, but drifting the car nicely, leaning on it just a little more than some of the others further back. So we ride on board with the Beast of Turin. Love the way that Huey Walker is constantly, not just looking over his shoulder, but almost turning his whole body. No mirrors, never mind things like that. His father there with the red and white crash helmet coming up on the inside in a car that he sits on. Look, there's nothing around him. You can see his arms, his legs, his feet, everything there on display as he works to try to get past Julian Maju for second place. But Mark Walker crouched over the wheel. What's behind me, he thinks. Looks over his shoulder into the chicane they come. This is the end of lap one. And again, leaning with the car, Huey Walker leads in one of the most spectacular grids we have at Speed Week. And look at this for second place now. Up to the outside comes... Mark Walker, the Darak will go through against the Sunbeam, and Ben Collings, still a long way back, the Blitz and Benz has a problem, I think he's heading for the pit lane, look, hand in the air, so I'm afraid the Duke of Richmond and Gordon's brother-in-law, Ben Collings, is heading for the pit, there he is. Ah, oh, that's a shame for the Blitz and Benz, but yeah. meanwhile up front, it's the Walker show, <laughs> it is, isn't it? And they both have the same demeanour at the wheel, don't they, that hunched over body language, tucking in tight, ducking down out of the airflow, but I think it's mainly just to get a bit of leverage on that heavy steering wheel. It is very unfair to describe this as wacky races, but there are some quite remarkable cars in this, uh, remarkable ideas of how to mate a car and an engine together to make it go fast in this period. So there, the Darren that did have second place dropping down the field because around the outside also now goes the silver Vauxhall 3098 of Rob Hubbard, Julian Goshi's car. So that picks up a place and the wasp-tailed Sunbeam Indianapolis of Julian Maju dropping back. Huey Walker all of a sudden has been gifted an absolute whopper of a lead. He has, and he's making the most of it, isn't he? I feel like he's pushing a little harder than some of the others, everybody else, quite rightly, giving each other space. Meanwhile, Huey Walker up front, managing to set the car up nicely on the way into the corners, just get back in, drifting a little bit. These kind of cars, of course, not so keen to change direction. They're very good at stretching their legs down the straight and gathering a huge head of speed, but not so keen to be slowed or turned. Place change there, look, Ben, as through on the inside line into the race lead goes Julian Majub, so he was able to suddenly gobble up the advantage of Huey Walker. Having said he had a big lead, it suddenly disappeared when the power of the Sunbeam kicked in, and that car was able to claw back the time down towards Woodcut. So now you've got the leading five starting to bunch up, because also uh, creeping into the mix, you'll see at the back of the pack, Rob Hubbard and others, out of the chicane, so the Sunbeam leads the way. And has Huey Walker got a problem? And he pulls to the outside, looks across. I think it's just lack of horsepower. Here's the 200 horsepower of the Darren Dunleash to Mark Walker. Zap straight through from third to first. Yeah, Huey Walker had a huge, big tank slapper. Got very crossed up on the exit of Woodcut on a run into the chicane. The car snatching sideways, not once but twice. Same happening again there over the crest at Madwick Corner. The car goes light just between the two apexes. Had to have a big armful of opposite lock, but he managed to gather it up nicely. So there you've got the Darak Ben in the hands of Mark Walker. Now he did lead, but here comes Julian Maju, but he comes up round the outside. So Julian gets his lead back, and Huey Walker down in third hasn't given up yet. Every corner you seem to be able to shuffle the order again. It's great, isn't it? 
It's absolutely wonderful. I mean, they're very, all very respectful of each other, aren't they? Giving lots of space, but also having to remain ever so conscious there again. Huey Walker getting a big snap of oversteer. The other cars look just a little more stable in the corners than that. Perhaps he's just pushing a little harder also. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you for illustrating. Oh, wonderful stuff. There might not be much rubber on those tyres, but those tyres smoke, even so. Huey Walker, real, real star in these. Uh, Rob Hubbard is behind them. Now, here again, look, the horsepower of the Darak starts to evince itself around the outside, third to first. So Mark Walker goes back into the race lead. This is lap three out of five. This is one of those races where you want to hide the chequered flag, isn't it? Because it's just great entertainment. All of them trying hard. We've had a change for fourth place, uh, which now means that uh, James Collins in the Hudson Super 6 is up one place. And Julian Majum goes back into the lead as they come into Woodkin. So trades and trades again. Now heading towards the pit straight. This might be where, should be where, the Darak can get the place back. Julian Majum, the... Iranian extraction driver comes through, hustling on in the uh, via file is Huey Walker in third place. But again, on this section of circuit, there's just no stopping Mark Walker. Give him a nice, fast section and he's away. Well, I was going to say, if I didn't know better, we got a close-up shot of Julian Majum's face as he went through the chicane. I'd swear blind he was grinning ear to ear, but probably less so now as he just got <laughs> cobbled alive, didn't he, by Walker on the start-finish straight. Popping Walt there to try and get a bit more power. Well, Julian Bajoub goes through. Bit of fuel. Bit of fuel in that. Yeah. So, struggling for fuel now. So, it's a busy life for the driver. Mark Walker down in third place. But if he's got everything back as it should be, can he attack once more? There is one more lap to run at the end of this. And look at Huey Walker closing, closing, diving past into the lead. Fantastic. He certainly seems to have the confidence out in the back section, which is a series of very quick turns. Lovely long shot. What a wonderful scene, these cars slicing through the English countryside. And so the order at the moment is going to change from here to Woodcut and back again, I would have thought, because we've seen how the Darak, if it's uh, good for fuel now, is going to be able to go through. It's been pumped through the system again, but it's a little bit sluggish out of Lavins, and that therefore means that you've got James Collins closing up now. So that's the leader this time, Huey Walker. He'll be starting the last lap at the end of this. He was the driver that finished in third spot in part one and there you've got the Garrett 200 horsepower catching back up again so getting up past the Sunbeam Indianapolis looking to the inside line as they come down towards Woodcut but not able to make a move there just leaning out having a downshift with his right hand sometimes see these guys having to pull on the anchors with a little help from the handbrake as well so there coming out of the chicane. Huey Walker will start the last lap with actually something of an advantage now. Can the Darrett bring down that gap in a straight line? If Huey Walker were to look over his shoulder now, he would find quite a bit of clear track space. So last lap, and it's a second and a half, but Huey Walker's lead suddenly is gobbled away by the end of the straight before Magic Corner. It's probably hard to that section alone. And he looks very comfortable in this part of the circuit, doesn't he? So, can he gather enough of a cushion through the next two or three turns and hold on to it as we just see yet more pumping? And we didn't see that in race one, did we? So, it does suggest that uh, here, Bart Walker is having to cope with a problem. Uh, having got some fuel back into the system, he can power on once more, heading now towards the uh, right and in elements approaching St Mary's. Up into second place has got Julian Majub once more, and not only that, but he now has closed onto the tail of Huey Walker. So, this race is still wide open with really only four corners to go. Well, it's all to play for, isn't it? On the long run down Lavin Strait into Woodcourt. And you've got traffic ahead, quite right, but it is all to play for. So Huey Walker with the yellow and red helmet leads the way. There is Julian Majub in second position. And other great battles are still raging on lower down the order. So there the Alfa Romeo of Tony Best goes through, just keeping at bay the Fiat S61, the 125 horsepower car of William Evans. But the race leaders will be heading down towards Woodcut. There they are through the traffic, and it's going to be Mark Walker that goes back into the race lead. 
Now, can he hang on in there? They're coming down towards Woodcut. So, Mark Walker on the inside, Huey Walker on the outside, and he's going to get the lead back. I was going to say, look out for Huey Walker. He seems to have the most confidence in his car under braking and in the turns. I think Huey Walker's probably got this one made if he can just hang on to the back end of the car over the last three, through the last few corners and over the line. Julian Madieu just taking an ever so slightly defensive line into the chicane. Will that keep second place in the bag for him? Has he got the grunt? No, he doesn't. It's a race win, though, for Huey Walker in another very entertaining SF Edge trophy.